Apple stock, ticker symbol AAPL. This company hasn't been doing too well. It's been under the pump a little over the past few months. Let me show you. Over the past one day alone, down 3.39%. Painful for what are evidently long-term oriented investors. Buy into this company, focusing on the long-term, and yet, day over day, feeling more and more pain. Five-day returns now, negative at negative 2.41%. One-month returns, still down. Still down 7.3%. Well, we've seen some companies over the past month exuding a degree of tangible stability in the marketplace. Apple, Apple's continued to fall. Six-month returns now down 17.95%. And year-to-date, year-to-date down 21.31%. I think it's fair to say that Apple's cracked a little. It's come under pressure from the marketplace more broadly and is declining with the marketplace. One-year returns still positive, but barely at just positive 12.66%. But year-to-date... Year to date, the reality is very evident. This company is under pressure, getting punished by this marketplace. So naturally, when you see a, such a high quality company, Apple, a company we all know to be of an extraordinary high degree of underlying stability and profitability, the question naturally becomes, is there a buying opportunity present? Is there a chance to increase our stake within this company or should we be waiting? Should the luxury um, tint of their company actually mean this company is likely to underperform in the event of recession? I've seen a lot of these arguments made. So let's investigate the underlying business. Let's investigate the financial stability, the profitability, and let's come to a conclusion as to whether Apple is a viable investment right now, or is it something we should really be staying away from? When it comes to underlying financial stability, you know, Apple's pretty much flawless. Yes, the cash to debt ratio does look a little low, cash to debt ratio of only 0.43, but... Think about it. Some investors will see that cash to debt ratio and say, well, that's far too low. Cash to debt ratio of only 0.43 means they can only pay down 43% of their debt outstanding before needing additional operational free cash flow to supplement the rest of their debt repayments going forward. But think about what Apple is. Think about the breadth and strength of their underlying businesses. Not only their hardware business in relation to the iPhone, Mac, and all those other hardware products, but also the service business. Also the consistent, low marginal cost free cash flow generated by those subscription and service offerings. And now, getting into the fintech space, becoming more and more like a bank, offering direct lending through their Apple Buy Now Pay Later service. This company, in terms of free cash flow accretion from their various business models, is potentially the single most free cash flow creative company in the world. And what that free cash flow provides, what that free cash flow provides in relation to the underlying stability of this business is enhanced financial stability. The ability to easily pay down those additional debt assumptions whilst also enabling that free cash flow to be reinvested, to build out their business going forward. And especially in this depressed, anxiety-laden marketplace, what that free cash flow enables them to do is make opportunistic acquisitions. Buy into companies they see trading at depressed prices that they can synergistically integrate into their Apple ecosystem. This company, despite the surface level low cash to debt ratio, is actually in a phenomenal financial position. And that's compounded by the Altman score, an Altman score of 7.34, indicating a tremendous degree of underlying stability, certainty, and financial strength with this company. Ask yourselves, what is the chance of Apple going away over the next three, four years? What's the chance of Apple disappearing within the next decade? I'd say virtually zero. This company is not going away. And in this doubtful marketplace, the marketplace where we continue to see pain and anxiety proliferating around not just Apple, but the market more broadly, the NASDAQ, the S&P, the Dow even, down massively on the year, I believe this is the type of company to own. A company that exudes a tremendous degree of underlying stability and certainty. So, evidently with Apple, there's a massive degree of underlying financial stability. But what about profitability? What about the underlying profitability of this company? We know it's a hardware company. We know it produces hardware, tangible products, the iPhone, the Macs. Usually... Operating within the hardware space, there's usually lower profitability. We're talking net margins of 10, 15%, and yet, look what Apple's doing. Net margins of 26.41%, almost doubling the higher end of what a hardware company would normally be achieving. This is not only indicative of the tremendous pricing power evident on their hardware products, but also the integration of their service businesses, also the integration of their subscription and financial service offering businesses. These... Those businesses accrete to free cash flow. They accrete to low marginal cost earnings and thus higher net margins for the company. Net margins, which by the way, are almost at their historical high ever for the company. 
just about 0.26% off the historical high in terms of net margins, also on an industry basis. It's simply outstanding. Better than 96.12% of all other companies within the hardware space. Operating margins are similar narrative at 30.93%. Again, industry base is simply outstanding. And gross margins? Gross margins are the same story. Historically, very, very high for company on, a, on an industry basis, simply outstanding. Are you beginning to see a trend? Are you beginning to see a trend in relation to the underlying quality of this company? Every single metric, whether it be the cash to debt ratio combined with the free cash flow accretion taking place, the Altman score, which is extremely high, all the net margin figures, everything, everything screams quality in relation to Apple. That's the reality with this company. There's a reason that this is one of, if not the single most valuable company in the world, a market cap of 2.39 trillion. You don't get there by chance. You don't get there by luck. You get there by being one of the single highest quality companies in the world. And you may say, well, evidently Lockheed, it's a strong underlying business. There's a lot of profitability. There's a lot of financial stability. But what about the management? What about the people actually running the company? Is Tim Cook really as good a capital allocator as some people seem to think? Well, let me show you this number. Again, when I, if I was evaluating a $100 billion company, so a company that's like about at the 20th of the size of Apple, a company that size, and they have returns on equity of, let's say, 15%, you know, I'd be satisfied. I'd say returns on equity of 15% for a company a 20th the size of Apple would be absolutely fine. But what do you think Apple's producing? Let me show you. Apple is producing, and brace yourself, returns on equity of 151 0.74%. 10x what the other company will be doing at a $100 billion level, a 20th of the size of Apple. That, that's the true measure of the power, the success, the quality of the management within Apple at present. Those returns on equity, yes, they are slightly influenced by the leverage being employed by the company, but by and large, that's simply outstanding. It's simply extraordinary. With that, higher returns on equity despite the struggles this company has supposedly been facing, despite the size of the company. It's simply outrageous. And returns on assets? Returns on assets are the same story. For a hardware company, you'd be expecting returns on assets around 10 to 15% at the high end. And yet this company is achieving returns on assets of 29.13% historically. And on an industry basis, some of the single greatest returns on assets they have ever achieved. That's the reality of Apple. Not only a profitable company, not only a financially strong company, but also an exceptionally well-run business. So, after these declines, which are evidently indicative of fear in the marketplace, rather than any degradation to the underlying quality of the company, let's investigate. Let's break it down. Let's have a look at the current valuation based upon the P.E. ratio and the Ford P.E. ratio, and let's think about, is the company fairly valued, overvalued, or is there an undervaluation opportunity present? Let's break it down. When we investigate it, yes, the P.E. ratios don't look too low. P.E. ratio of only 24.02 and 23.31. So fairly moderate P.E.s, neither a high degree of growth price in nor an extremely low degree of growth price in. Just pricing in modest growth for the company. But when you look at the tangible growth rates, tangible growth rates taking place over the past three to five years, you see something pretty extraordinary. Massive, massive growth taking place. A consistent Three-year earnings per share growth rate of 23.5%. Three-year free cash flow growth rate of 19.8%. And three-year EBITDA growth rate of 18.8%. That's all compounded together by a revenue growth rate of 17.8%. So massive, massive growth taking place across all the earnings segments. So, yes, the P-E ratios here aren't too low. But relative to the growth taking place, there may in fact be a degree, in fact a significant degree, of undervaluation present. Let me show you. If we break it down in more detail, if we have a look at the tangible earnings and the tangible free cash flow over the past decade or so, you get an even more compelling case. You can see over the past decade, growth has been rapidly accelerating for this company. 10-year growth rate of 14.7%, a five-year growth rate of 18.8%, and a one-year growth rate alone of 38.1%. Massive growth taking place. Consistent growth taking place for this equity. Very very impressive accelerating over time. So let's think about it. Let's think about the various service offerings and portfolio being built up by Apple. Not only 
with their core hardware offerings they offer right now, the iPhone, the Max, but also the potential of a VR AI headset, the potential of Project Titan to come to fruition, their electric car offering, and also the financial services play, the fintech play they're making right now. I believe they're going for the next decade. Apple is even more better positioned than it was over the past decade. If they can become the gateway to the metaverse through some sort of AR VR headset, as they have been the gateway to the internet through their mobile devices, then growth, then profitability, then additional margin accretion, it's all possible. So I think pricing and the growth rate around 17% going forward over the next decade, taking into account all those favorable secular tailwinds, isn't unreasonable for the company. And if we price that in, a growth rate of 17% going forward over the next decade, discount rate of 9% current earnings per share figure of $6.16 a share, look at that fair value. Fair value of $190.32. A margin of safety of 24.53%. That, that's the reality of this company. Massive degree of undervaluation present when you price it out in a rational and logical manner, taking into account all the secular tailwinds propelling the company going forward. So, despite the pain, despite the declines in this equity over the past few months, despite the continued pain being felt by Apple shareholders consistently month over month, week over week, day over day, the reality is this company is unchanged. It's still of an extremely high quality, still an extremely appealing long-term buy. So of course, conduct your own research first, look into the business before you make any moves. But if you enjoyed this video, if you have to learn something more about my current thoughts on Apple relative to the market more broadly and the various business segments in which they're venturing into, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company or topic you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. would love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.